All those in favour? Aye. Right. Those against? No. Nope. Thank you very much. Uh, next up we have Dr Matthew Jones from the New Zealand Institute of Landscape Architects. Cool. And sorry, I don't have um, the name of the other person presenting. Sure. Oh. Rebecca Jerem. And um, thank you very much. You've just got five minutes for your presentation. Thank you. It should be a slideshow. Sorry. Those sure. slides. Thank you. Uh, Uh, kia ora koutou katoa, uh, my name is uh, Matthew Jones and I am the branch chair of Tui O Pito Ora, the New Zealand Institute of Landscape Architects. Um, I'm joined today by Ms. Oh, sorry, let me introduce yourself. Uh, kia ora te whanau, um, ko Rebecca Aho, Rebecca Derham. I'm a registered landscape architect, part of the Auckland branch and also the Auckland response, climate response group for the Institute. Yes, so we have um, been We've had a climate change action group as part of the um, Landscape Architecture Institute in Auckland for around 12 months looking at various issues um, which are all raised today uh, and we are representing that group and also um, the wider um, uh, New Zealand based uh, landscape architects. So um, we, we, what we're trying to achieve is to continue to get landscape architecture and what we do in our design and sustainable management of our landscapes uh, to the front of mind of Auckland Council and bringing it to the, um, the fore in terms of the um, future projects. So a number of the issues that we'll quickly cover today and how landscape architects have addressed them include stormwater and flooding, sea level rise and coastal erosion, what is called an urban heat island effect, and soil runoff and biodiversity loss. Um, I'll quickly run through a couple of projects, um, sorry, a couple of issues that have come up related to those. So massive extreme weather events. Um, these will all be very familiar to you, such as the King Tides involved with extreme weather and sea level rise, such as Tamaki Drive in 2018, and this is not a one-off occurrence. The, the Great Flood of New Lynn 2017, which was a stormwater management related matter amongst a number of other issues. Sea level rise and coastal erosion. This is a really interesting image because in August 2020, uh, there was um, a storm event which involved a lot of wave surge. And you can see here, you've got um, significant erosion to this particular part of the beach, which were at some parts was up to 1.8 metres high where it had scoured in. But if you look to the bottom and to the top, where there had been revetment uh, in place, the, the coastal edge had actually managed to hold its own. And this is uh, a relate, in relation to um, an engineered response, but it was also um, designed with landscape architects to provide um, a more natural um, response to that environment. And also what is called an urban heat island effect, which is around where materials absorb heat um, during the day and it's released at night. And this is a factor of high levels of those uh, materials which absorb, but a lack of um, vegetation. Looks like we've lost the image there, but that's uh, an image of high intensive land uh, farming on Waiheke Island. So examples of um, some landscape architectural design responses include... Um, so this is a project which uh, Auckland Council will be familiar with. It was run by the Development Programs Office, the DPO, uh, and Dismiss Group, uh, together with other, other engineering firms. The brief here was to protect Sicaria Stream, uh, which ran through the area of the Westgate or Northwest, uh, you'll notice Northwest Retail Development Area, which is quite significant. Um, so the landscape architectural response to this was to effectively expand that stream into a series of detention ponds. And so this, this is not only providing an amenity and a recreational uh, landscape, but we've got um, some, uh, the integrity of the project is ready to filter, biofilter all of the stormwater and runoff from those hard surfaces out at Westgate. Um, Sorry, and then, so the uh, second one is in relation, is Daughter Street, beautiful amenity, but it's uh, in terms of an intensification of um, our waterfront in Winyard Quarter, but actually subtly, this is a low impact design through sustainable infrastructure, which treats the water on site and allows it to flow out um, to the coastal edge um, uh, in a more cleaner manner. 
Uh, again, the council will be aware of this project. So this was to daylight a utility uh, underground stormwater pipe and create a, a natural riparian uh, habitat. So that's a stream, creating a stream, and then a series again of wetlands um, which absorb that runoff from these uh, urbanised areas. That uh, is an example there of raising a boardwalk, um, so the freeboard or height above the surface of the pond is allowing for major storm events that come through Browns Bay uh, by about a half a metre. It's not even spelled properly. We've got uh, Greenslade Reserve, which is a uh, recreational space, which is actually, sorry, it's a somewhat a detention area, which actually disguises a, um, an open space and field. This is a um, project that Isthmus did with Panuku. Uh, it is the whole level, layer, um, level was dropped down to in, in, in cope with the stormwater management, um, but also enhance the amenity and daylighting of a, a stream. Tomanu Reserve in Onihanga. Uh, this is a reclamation resulting from um, the works to the uh, upgrade to the State Highway 20, coastal remediation, and was designed with um, uh, coastal erosion processes and uh, sea level rise in mind. Uh, again, another project council be aware of, but these are important projects in urban areas. So um, heavy infrastructure is sending uh, the stormwater at some speed, as you know, out into the foreshore and beach areas. Uh, these are slowing that water down and absorbing it back into the ground. Oh, I've lost the images again. So this is uh, awful Naki, which shows the intensification of the farming practices over the last um, 50 plus years. But through the late uh, 90s and 2000s, we had a, a re heavy revegetation process through a subdivision, which was a policy-based process, which was uh, undertaken by DJ Scott Associates. And then a small, really nice uh, piece of uh, infrastructure, which was put in, which was for uh, in addressing reduction in pollination and services and biodiversity loss uh, in Auckland through a, a small space in Grey Lynn. Uh, and happy to take any questions as I realise the bell has um, rang. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Only 10 seconds over, so <laughs> there's really a lot in that presentation. Uh, there are questions. Uh, Councillor Bartley. So I guess uh, the point of uh, adding these into the presentation is just to give it that real-time impact. Um, the council is already involved in these projects, but there is so much more that can be done. And I guess it's to reinforce that leadership that you're already showing as Kaitiaki, uh, Fakamaru, or Fenua, uh, or Moana, or Moanga. So es essentially, um, we we are an industry that is supportive of those same things, uh, and we have the capacity to 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 build those softer responses to climate change, including those projects. Cool, thank you. Um, Councillor Coombe. Well, if, I, well if, I'm, if I'm on the list, I'll just quickly say that it was just fantastic to see all those images. Thank you, really appreciated, and it's good for it to be reminded just how many different projects Council is involved in and just the opportunities that are there still for us to be responding to climate change and a whole lot of impacts in this way. So, tēnā kōrua. Thank you. Member Wilcox, um, Councillor Walker, then Councillor Cooper, and then we'll finish there. So, Member Wilcox. Uh, am I on? Yep, yeah, OK. Um, how do you go about engaging with Māori and Tangata Whenua, specifically when you're doing this kaupapa? Because I didn't see anything there about it or in your court at all. Uh, there is involvement with mana whenua. You're quite right. These are co-design processes that need to occur. It's, it's a question of governance and it's a question of outcomes for sure. Um, so the Te Aranga principles, design principles that Auckland Council has put together uh, are consistently reinforced to the uh, membership of the Institute. We're not here presenting on behalf of any one company. Um, we've just finished registration uh, for this year and that was a key topic was how are each of those candidates seeking registration for our Institute dealing with mana whenua. So it's about uh, early, early discussions and early consultation and then building in those uh, mahi toy and uh, Māori and the other concepts. Can I just ask a little supplementary? So, hakamaru matia, your name, tuia pito aroa. Tell me what tuia pito aroa means. 
Tupi Te Ora. Uh, so it's about um, binding or weaving of threads. Uh, and this was, um, consult we consulted with uh, Māori around that naming. So it's about pulling threads of um, things together. And as I say, that's, that's uh, the Maunga, it's Moana, it's the whenua, it's, it's the people, Tangata Whenua and uh, Pākehā and other uh, citizens. So it's a, that name is the binding of the ropes. And that's our accepted um, uh, te reo name for the Institute. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Walker. A couple of real quick questions. Is the Institute of Landscape uh, Architects concerned about the lack of blanket protection for trees across Auckland and the impact that's having on the loss of trees? And related to that, are you concerned about the lack of protection for the scheduled trees across Auckland that make up some of the most significant trees and the lack of budget around that currently? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah we, we were um, absolutely concerned with how that, well, that process was undertaken and we encouraged um, our members and our, um, the companies involved to submit where possible around um, that process, but also the Institute submitted on the recommendations to, of the um, protection of the trees, but more so around the, the scheduled trees in relation to their significance and what they do for our city. Uh, in an enhancement centre, but it also, in fact, in its visual and its amenity and its, um, you know, its, uh, the natural factor, 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 excuse me. Thank you. And last question, uh, Councillor Cooper. Kia ora. Um, I think you're saying you're a new, new institute. No? Oh, you were talking about registration. Okay, so I guess is really your purpose of coming here is to kind of build that relationship with our, our units, our staff and us. Correct. And work together more yeah, closely. So, um, based on the back of um, Councillor um, Bartley's question, was a relation to these are the issues we're facing. This is what landscape architects have done mm. in time. We see a huge opportunity here to continue this relationship, and we want to be part of the conversations because we understand there is an institute of architecture, there is engineers, there's planners. We want to be part of these conversations. You can see to demonstrate what we what we're doing, what we are capable of um, assisting with, and bringing all, you know, all these entities together to make it better open, so bringing that front of mind for the um, committee today. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you very much, and I know it's hard to try and fit everything into five minutes, and um, I know whenever we send out those warnings to presenters, it's probably a bit disappointing, but, um, but thank you for trying to fit as much as you could into that time, and I'm definitely keen to continue those relationships, so... Um, Thank you for the work you've done already and what you're doing. So, uh, mover in this situation. Councillor Cooper, Councillor um, Bartley, um, all those in favour? Aye. Those against? No. Nope. Thank you very much. Sure, thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Blackmore. Hannah Blackmore. Um, Thank you. I'll just, oh. just I think so. I was going to, if you could switch off your other microphone and then turn on that one. Otherwise, the sound will just, and then switch on the, switch on the microphone in front. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All this technology. <laughs> and we're just getting your suad. Is the presentation ready for? Oh, she. It's different than what was given to you this morning. Has that gone to everyone? Is this for your item, Sarah, or Hannah's? Hannah's. Okay. No, no. Sorry, I've I've put um, I've I've given two um, items to to Suad for you to have on your. But I've also put some hard copies of some material that. Um, okay. We'll just get um, your for what I'm speaking to right now. We'll just get your presentation. So Sandra's not here. Okay. It was on a stick. Sorry, Hannah, we're just getting That's your... 
Okay, you did, did you have a presentation or just the hard copy? No, no, I have no presentation. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. Just hand out. Apologies. Um, I thought the stick was the no, no, no. presentation. Sorry. Um, go ahead, you've got five minutes. Thanks, um, Hannah. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, what I would like to do to focus on the real concerns um, about today's proposal is to go back seven months. Seven months ago, I wrote to Mayor Goff a uh, copy to all of you, and I would like to take the time to read this to focus again. Dear Mayor Goff, it has taken the COVID-19 lockdown to bring into sharp focus the fact that whilst we are doing everything to protect our children from this virus, we are utterly failing to protect them from the toxic pesticides they face every day on their roads and parks and playgrounds. The thought of returning to the same old unnecessary poisonous regime after this pandemic is over is abhorrent. As we note in our children's campaign launch, this lockdown has given us all time to reflect on the past and contemplate the future we need, not least a future where all our children are safe from the actions of their own council. Dear Mayor Goff, as you know from all the presentations, petitions, submissions and appeals, the Weed Management Advisory, together with Panans and tens of thousands of Aucklanders, has been working tirelessly to achieve positive change for decades. In spite of all the promises and chemical reduction plans from your council, it hasn't happened, and that is utterly disgraceful. In 2017, the Weed Management Advisory appealed to you, to Mr Mayor, to transition our city to non-chemical public spaces immediately to protect our children in accordance with the council's weed management policy. We pointed out that the city had wasted four years, now seven years, since the policy had been passed that could protect them and that every year another vulnerable and precious 20,000 babies are born in Auckland. That is now 140,000 extra babies this council has put in harm's way. This poisoning of our children must not continue, Mr Mayor. Every week brings more expert scientific evidence of the detrimental impacts of pesticide exposure on vulnerable developing children's bodies, including on their immune systems, making them more vulnerable to infections such as COVID-19. What makes this such an emergency is that these frightening effects are evident from lower and lower levels of exposure, such as those in the sprays your council uses on roadsides, parks and playgrounds. Sprays you blithely assume to be safe, contrary to an overwhelming mass of independent scientific studies. Dear Mayor Goff, we appeal to you to take the time to read the evidence in our Protect the Children from Toxic Pesticides campaign on our website. Not only have we been researching and documenting the adverse effects of toxic pesticides, but the solution. The fact is that Auckland has the ability to maintain the entire city's roadside vegetation non-chemically, and over half its children in wealthier suburbs have actually enjoyed this for 20 years. But for the children, it is a different matter. Over half Auckland's children have, live in lower socioeconomic areas where they still endure toxic pesticides on roads and parks that they cannot avoid. This inequality is an iniquitous situation that should have been remedied long ago and something you could change tomorrow, Mr Mayor. Baskert Tunkak, the UN Special Rapporteur on Toxic, said in 2016, Children in low-income, indigenous, minority, or otherwise marginalized communities bear a disproportionate burden of our inaction on toxic chemicals, implicating the human rights principles of dignity, equality, and non-discrimination. In my view, the only solution to this injustice is the prevention of exposure. Please, Mayor Goff, this is an environmental health and human rights emergency and children cannot wait any longer. We need to get toxic pesticides out of their lives. We cannot continue to poison their future. We appeal to you to make the shift to non-chemical methodologies now so that as we move out of lockdown, we can continue to keep our children safe so that when they go back to school, it is not via streets have been sprayed with chemicals that, that can impair their ability to learn. 
We stand ready and willing to work with all and everyone to support you in bringing this about, Mr Mayor. We have a moral responsibility to act when there is doubt, not when victims emerge. So what we have here in front of us today, bringing us up to today, is absolutely abhorrent. I cannot even begin to say to you how disappointed we are in what's happened here, and I plead with you to please, please do not endorse this proposal, because what this proposal is will take toxic chemicals into every child's street, every child's path. And the fact of the matter is, is that the iniquitous situation that we identified, which is children and their health, all of our health, has somehow been turned into an inequality of budget. So please, uh, sorry I have to just sort of make this point, Mr Chairman, is that under this proposal, everybody will be far worse off and that the iniquitous situation that the local boards, particularly in the poor areas, have is that they cannot afford, they cannot afford to fund non-chemical. So the same situation will remain that the rich suburbs will be fine, the local suburbs and the poorer suburbs will be dissing it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it really... Thank you very much, um, Hannah. We have uh, two questions so far. One from Councillor Walker. Sure. So I've got a question for you, Hannah. And it, essentially the context is, is that your organisation helped to actually put together the Council's weed management um, strategy. So do you think that this agenda item accurately reflects and assesses what we're doing against the stated eight objects of the weed management strategy, particularly as it goes to ensure public health and safety? Um, thank you, Councillor Walker. No. Okay. This, this basically... Um, this proposal completely negates everything in the policy. It's not a question of, of, of implementing it. Seven years we've waited for this, and the first thing they do... Sure, got that. And the other question I've, I've got goes to the uh, legacy position of the, the whole cluster of North Shore um, local boards, uh, previously North Shore City, um, that have non-chemical use, and Auckland City. When those legacy councils made the decision to go chemical free, my understanding, because I was there and I'd just like you, you to corroborate that, is they based that decision partly on medical advice that was provided on the part of people in the community affected by chemicals. Can you cast any light on the um, medical situation across um, Auckland as it currently stands? Uh, yes, almost certainly everything that was done, and we're talking about going back 30-odd years, um, that, that that was precisely the reason why we went non-chemical, why councils chose to go non-chemical, was because of the health effects. Now, uh, and I'm sure you'll be hearing from Dr. Mary or Watts um, after myself, is that now we have a situation that the evidence is overwhelming that, that the lower, lower levels of the chemicals that are sprayed on our road have an effect, an endocrine disrupting effect. It's not just cancer. It, it is, and I have included in your um, little thing just a quote, quotes from some um, in the last five years from um, eminent scientists, <coughs> professors, all of them saying we must take this chemical out of the public sphere. Thank you, um, Councillor Walker. Councillor Watson. Um, thank you, and I just need a very quick answer to this, Hannah, just a yes or no, really. In 2016, Professor Bagley um, of Auckland Cancer Society presented to the Iraqi local board, and he said, in respect of what you've said today, um, because human cancers take a long time to develop, exposure of populations to a low dose of glyphosate over a long period of time represents a more significant risk than exposure to a high dose for a short time. 
does this pro is, isn't this proposal going to do exactly what Dr Bagley f fears here, that you will have all of Auckland exposed to low dose over a long period of time, and that's actually more risk than a high dose over a short period? Yes, that's correct. Thank you, Councillor Watson. Uh, Councillor Bartley. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm just looking at our report, and our report said uh, that the EPA considers glyphosate to be safe. So how are we supposed to listen to you and not the EPA? Oh, no, I'm not suggesting that, um, that I, that, you know, that um, I should listen to the EPA or even that you should be listening to the EPA, um, because the fact of the matter is you should be listening to the experts and um, I think you'll be hearing some more about that. Um, the EPA cannot say and should not be saying that anything is safe. They cannot say that. And this is your decision as councillors. You have to make the decision. Um, and and, and as, as countries and cities across the world um, are, are following um, you know, the banning of um, glyphosate and pesticides, they're not, they're not um, abiding by um, the, you know, they're taking a precautionary stance. And that is really what is important for council to do. Thank you, Councillor Bartley. Um, thank you, Hannah. Thank you very much for all your information, as always. Um, could I please have a mover, Councillor Walker? Councillor Watson, would like to second. All those in favour? Aye. And against? No, thank you. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. And now we have 